into Good Morning Arkansas. Chris Kane alongside Miss or Dr. Eleanor Kennedy joining us this morning to talk about heart arrhythmia. Uh, thank you so much for joining us and we're going to be taking some calls in a minute as well. Uh, can you kind of just start out and talking about what is heart arrhythmia for some of those who may not know? Well, a heart arrhythmia is any type of heart rhythm that is not quote unquote normal. So that can be a fast heart rhythm, a slow heart rhythm, uh, an irregular heart rhythm. And the single most common type of heart arrhythmia is what we call atrial fibrillation. Now, what does that exactly entail? Atrial fibrillation is a very rapid uh, heart rhythm pattern that starts in the top chambers of the heart or the atria. Uh, and uh, because the top, top chambers of the heart drive the heart rhythm, the rapid irregular pattern in the top chambers of the heart typically drive the bottom chambers of the heart to also beat in a rapid and irregular pattern so that people commonly experience symptoms such as an awareness of a fast irregular heart rhythm and because the efficiency is not ideal they often also experience symptoms such as fatigue or shortness of breath particularly shortness of breath with exertion and an uncomfortable pounding sensation so those are, the symptoms are, are you're aware of them most of the time most people are there are some people who are blissfully unaware of what their heart is doing uh, and that actually is a double-edged sword because if people are having atrial fibrillation we actually want to know about it because atrial fibrillation overall is uh, associated with a little bit increased risk of, of stroke and, and and some other issues with the function of the heart uh, so that it's it's good to be somewhat aware but not Overly aware. Overly aware. Oh, let's talk about how it's how it's treated exactly. Once you're diagnosed with it and you go in, how do you go about treating something like that? There's a little bit of a complicated uh, algorithm that we use depending on how long the person has been in atrial fibrillation, depending on what type type of symptoms they have, uh, depending on other other uh, medical problems that they might have. Um, we typically, uh, at least initially, make an effort to get the heart back into a normal heartbeat pattern and we may do that either with medication uh, or with what's called a cardioversion where we uh, pass electricity across the chest to essentially jump start the heart uh, back into a normal heartbeat pattern. Sometimes in certain patients particularly if they have symptoms and they have failed a medication we also recommend a procedure called ablation to actually get in and get rid of where the problem comes from. Okay well let's go ahead and take some callers right now. I believe we have uh, Diane from Hot Springs is on the phone. Diane, uh, welcome to Good Morning Arkansas. What question do you have for Dr. Kennedy this morning? Good morning. Um, uh, I am one who has uh, the atrial fib, and I am on two kinds of medication, Sotalol and Endor, and I also have suffered a TIA uh, in September. My question is, well, my medication, well, I have to take it for a very long time. Uh, one of the medications that you did not mention uh, that I'm concerned about, particularly since you've had a TIA, is you don't mention any type of blood thinner. If you've had a TIA previously, uh, the general recommendation, unless there's a good reason for you not to be, be on a blood thinner, uh, is that you should be on a blood thinner such as uh, uh, Coumadin or uh, Pradaxa. Uh, but in general, with atrial fibrillation, unless you either take medication for the procedure or in some cases uh, have, an, uh, have an ablation done, uh, we would expect your heart uh, to relapse back into atrial fibrillation unless it is treated in some way to suppress uh, the underlying tendency of the heart to go into atrial fibrillation. Okay, thank you, doctor, and thank you, Diane, for calling. Now uh, we'll get to our second caller. This is Barb from Hot Springs. Barb, welcome to Good Morning Arkansas, and uh, what question do you have for Dr. Kennedy today? Yeah, hi, good morning. My husband was diagnosed with a pneumonia, which unfortunately turned into a viral heart failure. He's a 69-year-old male. We went to a cardiologist. His heart was measured at 6.9. Uh, they believe there was a little regurgitation from the mitral valve. And um, we're, we're shocked. We're barely standing up at this point. We, should we get a second opinion and see what else we can do? I don't know if there's any support groups or if a pacemaker would help or, or if you can uh, give us any ideas here. I'm sorry. Did you say that he was shocked? Um... No, we, we were shocked. Of the shocked. Oh, over, the, over the fact that he has the enlarged heart related to the uh, virus. Absolutely. 
Um, is he on medication uh, for his enlarged yeah. heart? Yeah, he's on a lisinopril, a Lasix, Corig. Uh, he's on a low sodium diet and low fluids. Um, those are the standard recommendations that we would make at this time. Uh, certainly getting a second opinion uh, would, be, would be reasonable. If you have any questions about any other options, we always encourage that because it's important for patients to have peace of mind that they're receiving evidence-based uh, standard of care treatment. Okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Kennedy. Thank you, Barb. Uh, we have the information right here for the, Ar the Heart Clinic, Arkansas. Uh, it is at 10100 Canis Road, also the number on your screen. Any heart-related issues, call that number. Go see the doctors over at the Heart Clinic, Arkansas. Thank you so much, Dr. Kennedy, for joining us this morning. We appreciate the calls out there, and we'll be right back.